Good morning. It's technically still morning. Um, normally I post these videos uh, somewhere between 6 and 7 in the morning. This morning I had to be dad and so I had to stay home, be available, and um, practice self-control not to... Well, let's just say I know why some insects eat their young. And <laughs> But going through the Word this morning, I came across this, and I just want to read this passage, and I want to share it with you. Uh, it, this is out of Matthew, Matthew 8, and I'm starting with verse 34. Uh, and calling the crowd to him with his disciples, this is Jesus, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. First question is, what was the importance of the cross? Jesus hadn't gone to the cross. So why mention the cross? Maybe they had seen some crucifixions. The Romans were really good at it. He moves on. He goes, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Chapter 9, verse 1. And then he said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. When you take that paragraph and you break it down, some of the things that you might notice in there, or some of the things I notice right away are, number one, what does the cross have to do with anything? Well, again, it keeps pointing back to the fact that Jesus was always talking about his death to come. That he would be killed. That he would suffer at the hands of the religious leaders that he would die and in his death bring about many people to God. And in doing this, one of the things that he keeps coming back to is saying, listen, if I'm willing to die for you, and I do it joyfully. In fact, Hebrews says that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. From the very beginning, at 12 years old, he was teaching in the temple, remember that story about them losing him as a young kid? Yeah, he was 12. They lost him when they went to the temple and they couldn't find him and because they traveled almost a night's journey away or a day's journey away and at night they found out he was gone. And then they turn around, come back and looking for him, find him teaching the teachers. Here in the middle of all this, He's teaching them, saying, whoever wants to lose his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. You see, many of us are willing to live for something. We're willing to give our effort. We're willing to try our best for things. But we're not willing to lose for something. We're not willing to deny ourselves. If we were willing to do that, there would be a lot more skinnier people around. We'd all have college degrees, be doing our best job, managing our money well. See, the condition of the human heart is not that we have, have seen the good things and have tried it and it's hard. And No, it's that we see that it's hard and we leave it untried. And when it comes to following Jesus, at times it is hard. At times you are the only one standing up for what is right. And we have seen what happens with people when they won't stand up for what's right in this nation. They won't see, do the simple things of saying, don't break windows. Don't go out and set fires to things. Let's help put out the fire for this riot or whatever else you want to talk about in it. But I even go a little bit farther and say, I've watched marriages dissolve as they've had to spend more time together. Why? Because there's no foundation there. They didn't do it right at the beginning and they didn't go back and fix it when they had the chance. And when Jesus is sitting here saying, listen, if you want life, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose it now to gain what you can never lose later. That's the change. That's what this 
not just this nation, this world, what your family, what your kids, what your your friends are looking for is somebody who's willing to lay down themselves to take up what's greater than themselves. And not to speak in riddle or code, it's simply this. Will we follow Jesus? Will we do as he said to do? Will will we behave and will we live as he's asked us to? Rather than going, and oh, it's hard. It is hard. So what should you do? Go to the source of your strength. Go to him. Remember, if you humble yourself, he will lift you up. Even more so if you humble yourself to him. Father, help me today. My strength isn't enough. I need your help today. The strength and everything we need is right in front of us. It's just whether we will be willing to take it. It's funny, my phone has been going off as people have been texting me during this time. I should have silenced it. But I want you to know, just as sometimes that can be annoying... We don't annoy God when we go to Him. He delights in it. He's joyful about it. He delights in you. He's joyful about you. And that's some of the things that, as kids, when we want to love on our parents when we were younger, we would try to make them happy. Whether we had good or bad parents and whether that turned out well or not, I do know this, that God never looks at the work of our hands or the desire of our heart to make him happy and go, kid, you're not doing it. No, he says, this is my beloved. And he just says, abide in me. So I encourage you this morning to abide in him. Let him be the source of your strength. Father, be with us as we go about the rest of this day, even if it's as it's halfway over. And may we have strength today, not just to meet what we think our needs are, but may we have strength today to go above and beyond for whatever's going to happen later, for whatever might have happened already. And may we we be found to be with you, just like the apostles, who are ordinary men, but they had been with Jesus. Bless you the rest of this day. See you soon.